Hi guys, it's Lynn here. I hope you're having an amazing day. Now today, this is just another bit of a, a, a video vlog on rearranging a few more things here in the polytunnel. And um, us, I'm not sure that the other day, a few days ago now, I made a video where I moved all the Calanco de Grementianas and the Calanco Tubifloras, that was on the table there, onto the, um, show you here, all here in this corner and I moved the big aloe and moved a few things around here just to make a bit more space and um, this is a bit of a follow-up I've had a bit more bit of spare time now to carry on rearranging things everything's getting a little bit overgrown at this time of year <laughs> and today what I'm going to be doing is now I've got a bit of space here this table here is going to be replaced with one of these um, metal and plastic ones because they're very sturdy and also it, it means it's going to be waterproof. This one here is wooden and it's buckled as you can see and it's mouldy. So it's the last thing we want in the polytunnel. So we're going to be replacing that and then what we're going to be doing is moving all of these big masses of a punchers here. We're going to be moving them across onto the new table so it's going to give these a lot more space. As you can see the punchers are all crowded together and and um, although there's plenty of space around them for them to grow and water in them and everything, it just looks a bit like a jungle, um, a puncher jungle. And it's nice to have the, the plants to be seen and uh, so it looks more aesthetically pleasing. So by getting the table cleared here and replacing it, it means you'll be able to spread all the punchers across and it gives them a lot more space so they look a bit more pleasing to the eye and we have a little bit of space down here now the table we're going to be ordering is probably about three three to four feet so it should come out about this high and we should have a bit of space there now what we've got here is um our Pareski Opposis cacti and um, these are quite wacky because they look more like sort of normal well not normal plants but what's normal I suppose in the plant world but um, because they have leaves people often think that they're just a normal just a succulent and not necessarily a cactus or they just think it's some type of plant but they are cacti and they're commonly used more so for grafting plants where people graft cacti onto the end of these to make hard to um, grow cacti or ones that are very very slow growing to speed up their growth but I personally have never grafted plants it's not something I'm a big fan of um, I'm not judging anyone who does graft some some people have some incredible grafted beautiful plants that they're it's very artistic and they they graft a lot of the very hard miniature cacti and do an incredible job of it so um so it's, it's if they loved it that's fantastic um, it's just something I'm not personally into myself um, it always looks a bit complicated but we just love growing the plants I think they're wacky and we ordered these as cuttings from um, Cactine Hog all way back in I think it must have been February now and or February March I can't remember no it was a long long time ago and they've grown remarkable as you can see and obviously when they get very easy to take as cuttings you just cut the top off and um, literally put it into water and they root like anything unlike other cacti where you need to allow the the cut part to callus over um, with these you can just put them into water and they really root it's quite different to other cacti they're quite a, a strange little but unusual wacky type of variety <laughs> they're really good um, and as I say, these are very tall now. They're hitting the top of the polytunnel roof here. And what I'm going to be doing is moving them down into this corner here where there's a bit of a bit more space. Bubble wrap's a bit of a mess. I'm going to put that away. Bubble wrap we use there for the winter for over for bubble wrapping the whole polytunnel and um, a couple of sheets to keep the, the heat in when we have the heater on. So um, these are going to be to be moved here. And as I say, Prescopsis are so easy to propagate. If you're putting them into soil, I would normally wait a few days after cutting them. So if you if you cut cut them as a cut in there, wait a few days before putting it into dry soil. But sometimes when you cut them, when you put them into water, we've just cut them and put them into water and it's rooted pretty much straight away. But I personally would probably just recommend allowing it for a couple of days to callus over first um, personally that's that's my opinion anyway but it has worked for us when we've just put them straight into water and the same with things with a few of our succulents as well especially the sedum types what they say you shouldn't do and what works is, is sometimes different but these wacky wacky cacti here are going to be going in this corner and as I say enough of my waffle I'm going to show you what they look like there and what they look like when they're put away now that's all the saucers down on the floor there so um 
they're not going to be um, when I water them. They're not going to be going. Water's going to be going everywhere. So that's them there. And now to to move these big guys here, I'm going to be putting obviously the tallest ones at the back and the smallest ones at the front. <laughs> okay, guys. <laughs> Um, I've realised it's not going to work under here. As you can see, that one there isn't going to get much light because it's shaded by the uh, big table. It's okay for some of the um, shader-loving succulents, but Prescopuses do like a lot of sun. And um, these ones will be absolutely fine here, and then one's there. But um, what I'm going to be doing, I'm looking else around the polytunnel where with else to move, and I think a little bit of space here and also a bit of space there and I've just tried one what it looks like then it looks lovely so what I'm going to be doing is jotting them around the place I think putting a few here here and there all around the place um, that's going to look better than probably putting them all together um, in one part as I say some of them are going to be okay there but some of them are going to move around and uh, I'll show you what I do when I've uh, decided where to put them all that's them all put um, they're in the corner there, so I've got them uh, there, and I'll show you where I put all the other ones. I have jotted them about the place, so they look quite nice, because I had a little bit of height in between all the other plants. There's one here, there's one at the back there with the calanchoes, but they look quite good together actually with the heights. And another one here, and another one here, and another one there. So they look really good, all spaced out around the plants. And um, the good news is now, there is a lot more space on this table. As you can see, that's empty. A little bit full of soil, but um, I'm going to be uh, giving this a bit, leave it probably to dry for an hour or two, and give it a bit of a brush and pan. And then I'm going to be um, then moving these plants on here towards the back so it's going to give a lot more space to these plants as you can see a lot of them are epiphytes um, we have here the um, seleniceriuses um, the grandifloruses these are all all sort of taking over on here and then we have some epiphyllums uh, mainly all cuttings that we've got rooted up all different types and pineocerius cacti and pineocerius um, seedlings and um, some other epiphytes as well so um, it's going to be good to have more space for these and a lot of these are going to be overwintered inside the house um, in the winter so this will be a lot more clearer again to um, spread out some of these succulents so they'll have a lot more room to as you can see, this succulent table is a little bit like a jungle also. <laughs> I said there's lots of sort of space around the pots as such, but it's just that they're so overgrown. They need space to look a bit more aesthetically pleasing, otherwise you just see one mass of green. And um, when a lot of these are, these are going to be overwintered in the, in the grow rooms, this one is as well because that's a sensitive ep epiphyte. And um, obviously the pineoceruses and the um, seleniceruses. So but the majority of this table is going to be coming into the grow room. So these succulents then will be able to be spread across so um, they'll have a lot more room. And I so said the punches are going to be spread across on there. Um, but in the meantime, it gives us space at the back to push these across. And I'm going to show you what it looks like when they've all been rearranged. I'm rearranging a lot on the table now. Look how much more space there is, guys. There's tons of space, so there's going to be uh, loads of uh, room for all these plants now to be nicely displayed. And um, a couple over there too. So this is all going to be fun. And look at that lovely, um, lovely, beautiful um, epiphyllum. They're probably known as one of these zigzaggy cactus. It's a Cryptocereus. Anthonianus, <laughs> what a name. And um, that one I just gently placed on its side there. It's going to be got the ones that are hanging down and hanging down. I'm going to obviously eventually put this beautiful one into a hanging basket, I think, to put with all our other ones hanging up there. So, and this gorgeous one as well. I'm going to be having that so it's trailing down. Otherwise, that's sort of blocking a lot of lights for some of the succulents. So guys, that's the table all sorted out. And as you can see, there's a lot more room now. And there's actually space on the tray. Um, the trays, that is quite remarkable. Look, lots of space. And um, loads of space there as well. Look at that, that's wonderful. And this gorgeous um, epiphyllum here is going to be going into a hanging basket. And so is this one too. 
the zigzag one we've got a couple of different types we've got the other ones in the yard and um, the problem we sort of got at the moment is that they need to be in a hanging basket it's trying to find hanging baskets that are small enough to fit it's very very hard to buy small hanging baskets um, so if any of you guys know where I can get them from that's about the smallest size hanging basket I can find um, and it's still it's not necessarily too small as in the depth but it's too small as in the width because obviously um, you don't want to be putting it in too wide of a pot where there's extra soil going around it where the plants can rot so I'm looking for something possibly around sort of that width but obviously in a hanging basket because if you see the size they're in now it needs to go into the next size pot up which will be that one or um, even that one again for that one but this one needs a um, still a smallish pot but I'm going to keep a look out and as soon as I get two smallish smallish hanging basket pots stay tuned when I do a repotting video as I say I'm going to be bringing these ones into the house for the winter anyway and um, there you go guys it looks so much better and that's the um, the um, Presky opposis, all these all these words are tongue twisters. Presky opposis there, and obviously I just show you all the other ones I have, as you know, as I said earlier, all jotted around the place. So that's it. So the polytunnel is taking a bit of a shape now, and I know it's sort of late summer, and it's all going to get moved again when we move plants into the house to overwinter. But it's still got hopefully a good couple of months left before I need to worry about moving a bit. Hopefully we'll have a we'll have a good early fall and. Um, not too cold we'll see how it goes but and then as i say a lot of these will then be going upstairs into the plant rooms and these will be able to be spread across be a bit more room in the meantime this is looking a bit like a jungle so i'm gonna have to go through a lot of these succulents and probably give them a good pruning as you can see a lot of these can be pruned need to be pruned so and given all the extra cuttings away then to the cactus society and the only reason why guys i wish i could give you guys all cuttings but it's a nightmare for postage here in um uk and ireland um it is just so especially outside uk even to other parts of europe and it's just packing them up sending them up and posting them it's such time so time consuming guys so um if you guys were here you'd be so welcome to cuttings believe me but as i say we look if we have a good cactus society we sort of swap loads of cuttings with everybody so these are going to be getting a big pruning down and um hopefully making a bit more space so stay tuned for a blog probably in the next week or two when i'm going to try and make some type of space with this in the meantime because as you see it's like a jungle and it's blocking a lot of light out for the other ones and um we do have a lot of space now if we didn't have these big tomato plants which are amazing here we probably could have put a couple of tables in the middle and put a lot of the succulents on there and given a lot more space because as long as we can walk around and get the plants that's all that matters but maybe next year it's given us a bit of an idea it's been fun growing these these tomatoes though i have to say look at them gorgeous big uh, tomatoes they're looking amazing and still lots of flowers so we're going to have lots to eat <laughs> so guys i hope you enjoyed the little bit of a rearranging vlog and as i say stay tuned for the the next one probably the next week or two when i, when I get a day off to actually actually um, start on uh, this table and uh, I want to send you loads of love heaps of happiness and tons and tons of plant power as always from the Emerald Isle and until the next video bye